Welcome to our series on chest x-rays. Over the course of the next few videos, we will aim to provide a systematic breakdown on how to interpret chest x-rays. Let's start with a normal chest x-ray and some basic anatomy. The letter L on the top left tells you which side is the left hand side. Starting with the airways, we can see highlighted here are the borders of the trachea. Typically, this is in the midline and this can be traced down as it divides into the right and left main bronchi. The right bronchus is usually steeper than the left. Now moving on to the lung fields, we will start with the lobes. The right lung is divided into three distinct lobes by the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure. First, the right upper lobe is highlighted here. Then we see the right middle lobe, which overlaps with the right heart border, and the right lower lobe, which touches the right hemidiaphragm. As you've probably noticed, there is some considerable overlap between the lobes. This is due to the three-dimensional structure of the lungs. The lower lobe lies in a space posterior to the other lobes and the dome of the diaphragm. Moving on to the left side, the left lung is divided into two lobes, also by an oblique fissure. Here is the left upper lobe, which appears to occupy the entire lung field and touches the left heart border. The left lower lobe is similar to the right and shares a border with the left hemidiaphragm. Next, the lung hyla. These are the faint structures you see around and behind the heart. The hyla consists of pulmonary blood vessels, main bronchi, and lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are typically not visible in a normal chest x-ray. There is also an indentation on each side called the hyla point. When assessing the lungs, it's important to look at the surrounding pleura and both hemidiaphragms. These hemidiaphragms should have a curved shape and sharp costophrenic angles, with the right hemidiaphragm higher than the left due to the underlying liver. Occasionally on the left under the diaphragm you can see a gastric bubble. This is a normal sign. Next, moving on to the bones, we start off with the clavicle. Both clavicles should be equidistant. This is important to notice as it determines the rotation of the film. You can also identify the manubrium between the clavicles. Next, the scapula and the humerus. The scapula does not overlap the lung fields in this picture and in a properly taken x-ray, this is so there is an unobstructed view. Next, the ribs. The number of ribs seen gives an idea of inspiratory effort. Outlined here is the first left rib, running from posterior at the top to anterior at the bottom. The first rib isn't always visible, but if it is, you can use this as a marker to count down. On a PA film, the beam hits the posterior ribs first, hence why they are more visible. In this particular film, you can see down to the eighth anterior rib. Finally, we can see the vertebrae and the spinous processes. Identification of the vertebrae behind the heart signifies adequate penetration of the film. Final piece of anatomy, the border of the heart and major blood vessels. The heart typically lies to the left of the patient and covers less than 50% of the thoracic diameter. You can see here the subclavian artery, the aortic arch, the pulmonary artery, small portion of the left atrium, the left ventricle, the right atrium, the superior vena cava, the ascending aorta, That sums up chest x-ray anatomy basics. Please subscribe to our channel if you want to get updates on new videos as they're released.